back to Charm City. I'm Katie, this is Ross, and today we're gonna to talk to you about Gateway Beers. We're gonna walk you through what is a Gateway Beer, we're gonna talk about why it should be on your menu, give you some great examples we've got here, and we're also gonna talk about the glass we're to serve it in. So as we've said before, craft beer is a topic that's near and dear to our hearts. We love talking about it, and it's been said that now is a golden age of craft beers, which is great. So hopefully you're as excited as we are about that. Um, What's hard to believe though, that even in this golden age of craft beers, there are people who haven't heard of craft beer or who even don't like it. Yeah, uh, a lot of people claim to not like beer. Uh, that's usually stems from them trying uh, light lager, usually one of the macro lagers, so Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, et cetera. They didn't care for it, so they think, oh, beer's not for me. But really, there is a beer for everyone. If someone's willing to explore and take a couple risks, usually people will find something that they truly love. It's just a matter of exploring what's out there, and that's what is good about the styles that we've brought today. Great, so tell our viewers at home, what is a gateway beer? Because that'll help introduce people. Yeah, so gateway beers, sort of a general term for a lot of the lighter bodied, uh, easier drinking, less aggressive styles. These aren't gonna be super flashy or uh, impressive to the beer nerds a lot of times. They're just solid beers, they're tasty, and they're pretty easy drinking and accessible for people who maybe haven't uh, honed their palate towards the more extreme beer styles. Absolutely, so going back to some of our viewers who are the owners of restaurants and bars, why do I need to have these on my menu? So these will help help some of your guests branch out of either drinking light lagers that are by the big breweries, which are a little bit lower quality, and that's gonna help raise your checks, obviously. On top of that, you're giving, you're elevating the image of your establishment by offering higher end products, and you're also going to help maybe non-beer drinkers find something new that they like. So. There, there's sort of a lot of reasons to have these behind the bar. Absolutely, so one of the important things to remember here is you always wanna have an educated staff. So not only does your staff need to know about the beers because they can help walk those novice beer drinkers towards some of these great gateway beers, but they also need to know the glassware to serve it in. And remember that happy customers come back more frequently, spend more, and will stay longer at your restaurant, and probably more, most important, they're gonna tell other friends about their experience at your establishment. So uh, walk us through some of the examples that you brought for us today. Yeah, so first things first, we have this wheat beer, it's called The Love, it's from Star Hill, which is in Virginia. And for the glassware, I decided to go with a uh, wheat beer glass from Libby, very appropriate. I know the last time we talked um, in previous episodes, we talked about wheat beers, they're unfiltered, so you're gonna get some really cool color uh, not as much clarity through them, as which I learned from you. Um, and these really tall glasses are great to, to show that. Um, so we love this example here we've got from Libby. Some great shapes, it's got a good hand feel to it. And this is a little bit more of a durable glass, so it's gonna um, survive the back of the house as well too. Yeah, and it's also great. It's got the uh, classic appeal, this shape. It's usually associated with Hefeweizens and other wheat beers. So again, with similar to the no-neck pint, you see this shape and you know a wheat beer is coming your way. What good is uh, doing a video series on beer if you don't get to drink some of it, right? So. Yeah, and as you see, down here is a little bit more of a showcase of the body. Up here it really just works on bringing the nose, I mean obviously great head retention and then up top it sort of tightens up to uh, condense the nose. And you can smell that, you get a lot of banana, oh, a little definitely. bit of bubble gum, yeah. yeah. A little bit on, on my <laughs> nose actually, so. Yeah, but that's great. Alrighty. All right, so tried and true, a name that most of our viewers, I'm sure, know, uh, Sam Adams. Walk us through what we have here. Yeah, so classic lager, uh, Boston lager here. I went with a slightly more narrow uh, glass, and 
It's stemmed just because I liked it. This one's from Stozel. And like we talked about last time, for a nice, really well done lager, you're going to want um, to be able to see that clarity, which we will. It's a great pour. Another great thing about craft beer as well, Ross is doing this, you want to make sure that your servers are educated and doing this at table side also elevates that guest experience um, Absolutely. and you're going to have that every time which is really impressive versus just slamming down a beer for them yeah and you can see just great color good clarity again really good uh, head and good head retention as we'll see as the video goes on um, so it's just a classic it looks good in the glass absolutely looks good to me this is a Stozo glass, a little bit lighter on the hand feel. Um, Going to get a, a smaller lip, uh, which is definitely a thinner sidewall. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So this would be a, a higher price point, uh, but still a, a really wonderful glass as well. So up next we have the Yards Brawler. Uh, this is an example. These two are sort of, you know, a, a light lager and a wheat beer are sort of seen as your standard gateway beer styles. Uh, for this one, it's. Uh, actually a classic English style, an English mild, but it's equivalent to a lot of the lighter amber ales out there. And it's got a really beautiful color, which is going to be showcased with this glass from Cardinal. Yeah, the Excalibur, which I love that name. And this is an example of one that's sort of, um, this is going to the next step of Gateway Beers. As you'll see, the color is going to be a little bit darker. So like your gateway beer, you know, 201 instead of 101. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you'll see this sort of like, uh, like red or amber red color. Um, so and I chose a slightly thicker glass, um, wider body too, to sort of showcase that. It's great. This has a stem, so for those of you who, who watched previous episodes, you know that a stem is great because it allows you to not necessarily touch the beverage or the beer that you have inside, so you're not going to mess with the temperature at all um, if you don't want to. Yeah. And this is one of my, just one of my go-tos, so I thought I had to include it. Great. And then another classic here, uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. This is sort of the, the hoppy beer that can potentially get people into hoppy beers. Uh, so that's why I included it. Uh, American pale ales are not necessarily what's usually considered a gateway beer or gateway style, but this is the most popular one for a reason. A lot of people, maybe they've had some more aggressive IPAs or even other American pale ales that were a little bit more uh, assertive with their hop flavors. And I, I like including this one because it's that really accessible, uh, well-loved, <laughs> classic American Pale Ale. I love the tulip shape of this glass that you're about to show us. Um, it's a little bit different than everything else we have here. A shorter glass, um, but still, you know, a really classic shape. Yeah, and as we've talked about before, it's going to help bring out some of the nose, which hoppy beers usually have just a great, great nose. And again, we like the stem because we want to cup it and warm it up. We can if it gets served a little cold. Or you can hold it by the stem and you don't have to uh, warm your beer up any further. All of these glasses, as you can see, just really highlight the beauty in each one of these beers. Um, you can see you know, all the colors of each one of them, which is great. Mm. Now I'm just excited to drink all these beers, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So um, we're going to get to drinking some of the beer. So we're going to we're going to wrap up here. But in today's episode, we talked to you about what is a gateway beer. We showed you some really great examples. Hopefully you're as thirsty as we are. Uh, we talked about what to serve them in and why they're really important for your menu. So um, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram at building 46 BLDG 46. Uh, or, you know, if you have any suggestion, beer suggestions, comments, questions, you can email me at katie at tabletopjournal.com or ross at tabletopjournal.com. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Remember, tabletop matters.